torn apart by armed militias and in parts dominated by one of al-Qaeda's most active and aggressive factions. Travel to Yemen has for some time been advised against, but rising tensions have now prompted the Foreign Office to go one step further and temporarily close the British Embassy. The last al-Qaeda-linked attack against any um, Western interests in Sana'a here in Yemen was against the British in 2010. The British ambassador here um, escaped an assassination attempt in April 2010, and then the deputy ambassador was also attacked um, by an RPG on her way to work at the embassy here in October 2010. And it's not just Britain that's responding to a growing threat. The US State Department has also issued a global travel alert, warning tourists of a possible terrorist attack. If I was going to the Middle East, yeah, I'd cancel my flight. I would not go anywhere. North Africa, Middle East, I wouldn't do it. It doesn't really bother me too much. An opinion not shared by Mr Obama, who this week met with the Yemeni president. According to Sky sources, he's said to have stated all appropriate steps must be taken to protect Americans. This is real stuff. The United States State Department doesn't play politics. And I can assure you that President Obama is rather concerned such is the seriousness of the perceived threat that both the British and US will close their embassies in the Yemeni capital on the 4th and 5th of August. The alert has also led the United States to instruct a further 21 offices to close on Sunday across the Middle East and in North Africa. Little is currently known about what's triggered these alerts, but according to a White House spokesman, current information suggests that al-Qaeda and affiliated organisations continue to plan terrorist attacks both in the region and beyond. <laughs> President Obama was heavily criticised following the 2012 embassy attack in Benghazi that left four Americans dead, including Ambassador Chris Stevens. Whilst not directly connected, failings then will have no doubt played a part in shaping current reactions to what has been called a very real worldwide threat. James Banks, Sky News.